Hey girls, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some sculpted acrylic nails using products from Kira Sky. So this is like the first time I've ever done sculpted acrylic nails and on top of that I'm making them like 3XL so this is going to be a very challenging video for me so let's get right into the application. I do already have a little bit of dip powder on my nails. I did use the Kira Sky Color Glistening Snow. I'm just going to be applying the acrylic right over top of this product. I am going to go ahead and lay down the Kira Sky Disposable Nail Mats. I really love these. I have been using them for a while now and I do really love the quality. I do also have an extra one here to wipe the brush from the acrylic. Of course, I am going to be using the new Kira Sky Dappen Dish. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love mine so much. Of course, because I am doing acrylic, I do need some monomer. This is Kira Sky's EMA monomer. Do make sure that your monomer never has MMA because that is very harmful for your nails. I am using the 16 ounce. They also have 8 ounce and a gallon size on their website. Another very important thing for acrylic is the brush. So here I have two of Kira Sky's Kalinsky nail brushes. These are both the pink ones. I do have a size 10 and a size 14, which I will be using both of these in the manicure. We are doing some sculpted acrylic nails, so I am going to be using these paper nail forms. These are not the best quality ones, but these are just what I have, so I'm going to be using these for the nails. Here's just a quick little size comparison of the size 10 versus the size 14 acrylic brush. These are really good high quality Kalinsky acrylic nail brushes. If you are new to doing acrylic, definitely stick with smaller size brushes. It will make the application a lot easier. So for the acrylic application, I will be using Kira Sky's All-in-One Acrylic. This can be used as dip powder or acrylic, which you guys know, even though I do mostly dip powder, I do like to stick with all-in-one powders. That way, if I do decide to do acrylic, I can go ahead and use what I already have. So I do have like a bunch of pinks and nudes and I want to go ahead and swatch out the colors before I place it on my nails just so that I'm able to get the perfect color that I'm looking for. If you guys are interested to purchase any of these products, I will have everything linked in the description. You can also use my code KCNAILS to save a little bit of money on the website. I do want to go ahead and also thank Kira Sky for sponsoring this video. So there is a little hack for pouring your monomer without making a big mess. So basically for this, you put the brush vertically into the dappen dish and put the jar of monomer up to your brush and slowly start pouring it. But even doing this, I always make a huge mess. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, just try to ignore the fact that I spilt the monomer. I did also add some monomer odor drops just to try to minimize the smell from the monomer. Once I started playing around with the brush, I did realize I had a little bit of acrylic. So basically to remove the acrylic from your brush, you just want to leave it in some monomer. Depending on how much acrylic you have stuck in your brush just determines how long you have to leave it in the monomer. I didn't really have that much acrylic stuck in the brush, so just a few seconds of swirling the brush around to get rid of the stuck acrylic. A few moments later. One eternity later. So now that I've removed the stuck acrylic, I'm going to go ahead and swatch out all of the colors. These are not new colors for me. Again, I'm just trying to find exactly what color I want to use for this nail set. So here are the swatches. I really don't have that many pinks, so I did choose basically the only pink that I swatched out, which is called Let's Flamingo. We're going to go ahead and apply the nail forms. I did want very long nails for this nail set, and these nail forms are not long enough, so I am going to be double forming the nails. What? To do this, I am just folding over part of the nail form, and I'm going to be placing another nail form right over the top. I am trying to make sure everything lines up so I have a very straight nail form to apply to the nail. I am going to roll the nail form just to try to get a little bit of curve into the form. 
I am just placing the form directly underneath the free edge of my nail. You do want to try not to have any gaps in this area. Once I have it in place, I did stick it to my skin as well as squeezing the sides to give it a little bit of curve. So that is how I fitted my paper form. I am going to do the same thing for three more nails. I will be doing the thumb after the application of the four nails. I will be honest, doing forms is a little bit more difficult than just using like nail tips. I almost used nail tips for this nail design, the Kira Sky Extra Extra Long Coffin ones, but I did want to give myself a little bit of a challenge. I have done acrylic nails like one or two other times, but I haven't done any sculpted acrylic nails, so I wanted to go ahead and give myself a little bit of a challenge. So here are those four nails formed and ready for the acrylic application. I want to go ahead and say I am a beginner with acrylic. This is only my third set of acrylic nails. Please go easy on me down below in the comments and leave any helpful tips for acrylic application. I went ahead and picked up the acrylic bead. I did slightly drain it out onto the towel. I just went ahead and placed it at the free edge of my natural nail. After the acrylic set on the form for a second, it got very runny and difficult for me to work with. I do end up having a better consistency for my acrylic beads later on in the application, but especially these first few beads are really bad. Like the first two or three nails was not that great. But after that, I really did get the hang of doing acrylic and my application got a little bit better. One thing I am really focusing on for this acrylic application is trying to get the sides very straight. I don't want to have to do a ton of filing for these acrylic nails. I personally am not a huge fan of filing and I know it takes a very long time. So having the best application will definitely reduce the time that you have to spend filing, which is what I am trying to do for this application. One thing that was happening to me a lot in the beginning of this application was the acrylic was just like sticking to the brush instead of like gliding across it. I think I found out throughout this video that the acrylic brush does have to have a decent amount of monomer in it for the acrylic not to stick like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is what I found out. One thing I do want to mention for this application is I did not try to follow a one bead or three bead method. Trying to do like one bead method would be almost impossible for me. I really don't work with acrylic and that is a very advanced skill, especially for someone that does not work with acrylic. So if you are just starting out, don't worry about how many beads it takes you. Try and focus on getting the structure of the nail as best as you can. So as you guys are seeing with the application, I am taking the acrylic all the way down to the very edge of the nail form. I do know I probably will file a decent amount of product off and I want to have the nail as long as possible. By far, the hardest thing about doing the application for me was the cuticle bead. I did not want to get any acrylic on my skin. It does not look good. It doesn't feel good. It's also really bad to get nail products on your skin because you can develop allergies over time. I also want to prevent lifting in my nails, so trying to avoid the skin is definitely an important step of the application. I did try to stay a hairline away from the cuticle area, but because I am not used to working with acrylic and my beads were a little bit more runny than I was expecting them to be, it did make it a little bit hard to stay away from the skin. I do feel like I did a pretty good job around the cuticle considering this is only like my third time doing acrylic nails. That is something I did struggle a lot with when I was younger doing my own nails, like painting them and stuff. I would get a lot of product on my skin and it wouldn't look good. So that is something I have really tried to focus on since starting my YouTube channel. One thing that I feel like I was a little bit unsure about was the placement of the apex. I did want a decent structure for these nails simply because they are very long. I knew that I could not have flat nails. Also, I did know that this nail set was going to take me a few days to complete, which again is why I wanted a decent structure to prevent the nails from breaking before I could even finish the nails. I felt a little bit unsure of exactly where to place it because these nails are so long. 
I don't really see a lot of people with nails this length showing the placement of their apex. So I feel a little bit uneducated on where I should have placed it. So to kind of compensate for that, I did make the nails a little bit thicker than I think they should be. That way I could file off most of the product and still have a decent structure for the nails. So I do kind of want to go back to the topic of the consistency of the acrylic beads. As I said, this is only like my third time working with acrylic. I have done two nail sets with acrylic, one of them being with Kira Sky products. So technically this is only like my second time really working with acrylic from Kira Sky Nails. I know that a lot of people say you have to adjust to the consistency of each brand's acrylic. And the fact that I don't really work with acrylic anyway does make this application very difficult. I did find out about halfway through this acrylic application the best way for me to get a good consistency bead was after picking up the acrylic, I drained the back of the brush onto the towel and I did try to wait a few seconds before placing it on the nail. This did make the acrylic less runny and more manageable for me. I personally like to work with stiffer products, like for example when I'm using poly gel. I hate the poly gel that is very runny. I want poly gel that is extremely stiff and does not move. I do kind of feel like I expect the same thing from acrylic and it just does not work like that. I see all of these acrylic application videos and people make it look so much easier than it actually is. I'm sure it's because these people have been doing acrylic for so long, they are very used to the consistency. They probably already found the correct techniques to get the consistency like they want. So I'm sure that this is more of a practice type of thing, but I just wanted to go ahead and mention that. If you guys did notice, I had too much acrylic on the towel and I did go ahead and switch it out for a paper towel. I kind of did that unknowingly, but after filming the application, I did see a video online saying that if you have too much acrylic in your towel, it will gunk up your brush and that is not good when you're trying to apply acrylic. You want to make sure not to have any stuck acrylic in your brush during the application. So that is kind of all I have to say at the moment. I don't really have any tips or tricks because I am a beginner. If you guys have any good helpful tips, definitely leave it down below in the comments. I would love to hear your tips and tricks for acrylic application. I am just going to go ahead and finish up the application and I will come back for the next step. So after applying the acrylic to all of the nails, I did go ahead and take off the nail forms. This part of the process is extremely satisfying. I love the step of doing sculpted nails. I have done sculpted nails with poly gel before, but never with acrylic. So these nails do look very whack. So I'm gonna go ahead and file and shape all of them. So I am taking Kira size 100, 100 grit hand file, and I'm going to go ahead and start reshaping the edges and the surface of all of the nails. This step of the process is extremely repetitive and very time consuming, so I'm not going to be showing all of the filing process for this video. I do want to say the application and filing alone took me like three and a half hours. It was a, such a long process, but I really love how these nails turned out. I'm going to go ahead and apply Kira Sky's Velvet Matte Gel Top Coat. I am applying the matte gel top coat because I will be doing some nail art, but you guys know I love to do my nail art over a very smooth surface. So while I'm applying the top coat, I do want to go ahead and show you guys the inspo for today's nail set. This is a nail set done by Dawn Marie Nails on Instagram. I was so obsessed when I seen this picture that she posted. She does really good nail art and I wanted to recreate this one using Kira Sky's products. If you guys are interested to check out her page, I will leave her Instagram linked down below. I did go ahead and cure the matte gel top coat for a full minute under Kira Sky's lavender LED nail lamp. I will be doing some transfer foils, so I am going ahead and applying a transfer foil glue to the pinky nail. I am applying this glue pretty thick and over the entire nail. After applying the foil gel, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. After the foil gel has been fully cured, I am taking the transfer foil. This is a black lace transfer foil. I am placing this over the entire nail and I'm going to go ahead and transfer the design. To transfer the design, I am using my nail and also the tip of a rhinestone applicator. 
I will go ahead and say I am not the best at doing transfer foils. I am trying to get the hang of it at the moment. There are some areas that just don't transfer and I have to repeat the same process all over again, which did happen to me for this nail as well. Basically, one thing I have noticed is you want to rub it until the design changes color from the rest of the transfer foil. That kind of indicates to you that the design has been transferred onto the nail. For example, for this nail, the transfer foil does turn gray once the design has transferred onto your nail. So as you can see, I did have a pretty good transfer except for the sides of the nail. So as I said, I am going to repeat the same process to transfer the rest of the design. So I did just take the same piece of transfer foil to try to continue out the nail design. To finish out the pinky, I do have these light pink rhinestones. I did get these from Amazon. I also have Kira Sky's silver dollar rhinestones. And I will be applying these with the no wipe gel top coat. I did go ahead and apply a layer of the top coat over the entire nail. Kira Sky does have a bling it on rhinestone gel, but I am not going to be using that for this manicure. If you don't want your rhinestones to last, definitely use that. It will hold them on extremely well. I will be using the Kira Sky rhinestone applicator to pick up the rhinestones. I will be picking the bigger pink shapes for this nail. I will also be picking up some of these smaller silver dollar rhinestones. After doing the rhinestone application, I do have these small silver caviar beads and I'm just going to be placing two of these in between each of the rhinestones. I really love doing this for my rhinestone application. I feel like adding caviar beads really changes the look of the nails when you're doing rhinestones. Once I have the rhinestone placement like I want, I did go ahead and do a full cure. Next, I am going in with the black gel art liner. This is called Negative Space. I am making sure to remove all of the excess polish from the brush. Onto the ring fingernail, I will be doing a rib cage. So I'm just starting with the center, which is also known as your sternum. I'm just drawing this line to about the sides of my finger. After drawing the straight line down, we are gonna go ahead and draw the collarbones. So I'm just drawing some lines going off to the side towards the cuticle area. After doing the collarbone, we are going to go ahead and start drawing the rib cage. I'm just drawing some curved lines going up towards the collarbone. I will be honest, this was actually really difficult for me. This is actually like my third or fourth attempt at drawing the rib cage, just because I wasn't really able to get the shape exactly like I wanted. This is also not a realistic rib cage because there is not 24 ribs, there is only 10 but I do really like how this nail art turned out. Once I finished those ribs, I did go ahead and repeat the same thing on the opposite side of the sternum. Once I perfected all of the lines, I did go ahead and cure that under the nail lamp. Do make sure to fully cure all of your black gel polishes. Next, I am going back with the non-white top coat and I'm going to go ahead and top coat the entire nail. Into the uncured top coat, I am taking these small circular pink rhinestones and I'm placing these going down the sternum. For the first one that connects the neck to the collarbone is a little bit bigger than all of the other ones, just to give it a little bit more detail for the rhinestone placement. I'm also going to be adding some rhinestones at the tip of the nail, so I do have this little pink square. I am placing this almost at the tip. I'm then taking some medium-sized black circular rhinestones and I'm going to place one of these just below the square. Going back with Kira Sky's silver dollar rhinestones, I am taking a pretty small one and I'm going to place this just above the square. I did end up rearranging these rhinestones just because I didn't like exactly how I placed them. 
and taking the smallest black ones i'm going to be doing like the little arrow down this is basically like continuing out the skeleton by doing the spine i really liked this part of the nail design i feel like she did hers so well this step was extremely difficult and i ended up doing like 90 percent of it off camera just because these small caviar beads did not want to line up perfectly so i spent a really good amount of time trying to get these as straight as possible there's also a really small arrow at the bottom of the caviar beads, which was also very difficult to do. I'm also going to be adding some of these small caviar beads just around the rhinestone placement at the tip of the nail. Once I have all of the rhinestones and caviar beads placed, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. Next, I will be sculpting out these skulls, so I am going back with the Daffin Dish. I am going to be putting some rubbing alcohol in this because I will be using poly gel for the 3D sculpting. Of course, I do have a poly gel brush to apply the poly gel. So I'm just taking the poly gel and I'm placing a pretty big bead in the center of the middle fingernail. Taking the poly gel brush dipped in the rubbing alcohol, I am going to go ahead and start flattening out that bead of poly gel. I'm also going to be sculpting it into a skull shape. Doing this was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I do really like to sculpt things with poly gel. I did not want to attempt this with acrylic because I knew it would not turn out good. I am definitely not that good with acrylic yet to attempt to sculpt things, so I did figure I would just go ahead and use poly gel. For the inspo picture, her skull looked very like 3D. Mine ended up blending in with the nail a little bit more and I actually really like how it turned out. Before I cure that, I did take a dotting tool that had a little bit of black gel polish on it and I'm going to be molding out the eyes and the nose and the mouth. I will go ahead and say that the mouth did not turn out that great. I know what it is and I feel like you can make out what it is pretty well, but it was really difficult because the teeth are extremely small so I wasn't able to get it exactly like I wanted. So I ended up doing like a small dotting motion for the teeth and I feel like it did turn out pretty decent. I did go ahead and cure the poly gel for a full minute. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but at this point in my video, I am kind of skipping around a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I did the index nail. I am taking the Kiera Sky non-wipe gel top coat and I'm applying this to the entire nail. I do have these very small black rhinestones and I'm also going to be using these small pink ones. I'm going to be taking both of these rhinestones and I'm going to alternate them as I place them. For this nail design, I am just doing a circle around the base of the nail. Once I have the circle of rhinestones placed, I am going to be doing a little line coming off of that. So I just want to go ahead and clear up any confusion right now. Yes, this is a necklace nail design, but it is not a scapular cross. It is more La Santa Muerte because I did not have the right charm for this nail design. So once I have all of the rhinestones and the charm placed, I did go ahead and do a full cure under the nail lamp. Next, I am taking Kira Sky's Peaches and Cream Gel Polish and I'm going to be painting over the skull. So I did originally use white poly gel to sculpt out the skull, but after looking at it, I felt like it was a little bit too bright for the nail set, so I did want to tone down the color just a little bit. After applying the gel polish, I did go ahead and cure. I am going back with my dotting tool and the brown gel liner color called Oh My Gotti. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the eyes and do the nose as well. Then taking the liner brush from the gel bottle, I am going to go ahead and outline the mouth and do a little bit of shadowing on the skull. This was actually really difficult as well because the gel polish didn't really want to blend that well. I do have to go ahead and say I do need to work on my gel polish blending because I want to do some more nail art like this, but that does mean I have to do a little bit more blending for my gel polishes. Once I have the shading like I want, I did go ahead and cure. Next, I am going back with the Velvet Matte Gel Top Coat and I'm going to go ahead and top coat the skull. I am doing this just to make sure I do not mess up the skull when I'm doing the next steps. Once I apply the matte top coat to the skull, I did go ahead and cure. I am going to move on to the thumbnail, but I will come back to the middle fingernail in just a minute. So I am taking the foil gel and I'm doing a fringe tip outline for the thumbnail. 
This is a little bit difficult to see on camera, but you can see what you're doing a little bit better in person. After applying the foil gel, I did go ahead and do a full cure. Going back with the same lace foil, I am going to go ahead and apply this to the fringe tip that I just created. I do have to say that this foil transfer did turn out pretty good. There wasn't that many areas that needed to be fixed. I am going back with the black gel liner and I'm going to go ahead and outline the French tip. So for the inspo pick, she did originally do a different design for the thumbnail. If I'm not mistaken, it was about the same as the ring fingernail. But because that nail did take me quite a few tries, I wanted to do something a little bit quicker and different for the thumbnail, which is why I did decide to do a fringe tip for the thumb. I did also want something a little bit darker for the thumb. Just because the index, middle, and ring fingernail are very pink, I wanted to do something to blend in the pinky nail, which is why I did decide to do a fringe tip with the foil design. After outlining the fringe tip, I did go ahead and cure that under the nail lamp. So we are going to switch back to the middle fingernail. I do have these little flower charms. Everyone was using these back in the summer and I haven't really used them since. I am going to go ahead and take the matte gel top coat and apply a layer to the entire nail, including the 3D skull, which is why I wanted to mention that applying the first layer was a little bit pointless, but I'll get into that in just a second. I am taking the pink flowers and I'm going to go ahead and place these into the uncured gel. I am going back with these small caviar beads and I'm placing these in the center of the flowers. So I did look into how she made the roses and she did use a 3D silicone mold from a different company. I did not want to spend that much money for a silicone mold. So I did end up looking on Amazon and I didn't find something exactly like I wanted. So I decided I would just go ahead and try to do something different. Originally, I did plan to do 3D roses with poly gel and I did try to sculpt them out, but I tried a few different methods and it was not looking how I wanted. So after that, I did try to sculpt out 3D flowers on the nail and this was not turning out how I wanted either. I ended up just going for these little flower charms. I do really like how these made the set look. It's not like super 3D, but it's just enough 3D to not bother you. It does also make my set different from hers, even though this is a recreation nail set. Sometimes I prefer not to exactly copy someone else's nail art just because someone else has already done it and you kind of want to add your own twist to things. In my opinion, it is nice to see recreation nail sets that are exactly like the inspo pick just because sometimes those people do not do nail tutorials and some people really want to know how to achieve that exact nail look. So I do think that exact nail art recreations are nice in some cases. Other times it is really good to have a little bit of variety with your recreation. Either way, if you are doing an exact replica of someone else's work or if you are putting your own spin to things, I still think it's very important to credit the person that you got the inspo from just because even if you add your own twist, the nail sets are still extremely similar. I know sometimes it might be really difficult to know who did that original nail design. So many people copy nail designs and they do not give credit, which is very annoying. In my opinion, that is very unprofessional as a creator. If you're going to copy someone else's work, at least give credit or tag them in the post. Once I have the flowers and the rhinestones placed, I did go ahead and cure. Going back to finish the thumbnail, I am going back with the non-wipe gel top coat and I'm going to go ahead and apply a layer to the entire nail. Before I cure that layer of top coat, I am going to go ahead and do a rhinestone placement. This is very similar to the pinky nail except I did use slightly different shapes. Once I had the rhinestone placement like I want, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. Last but not least, I am taking the cuticle oil, this is the rose scent, and I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all of the cuticles. It is important to rehydrate your skin after every single manicure. And here are the nails. I really like how these turned out. I feel like the skull could have turned out a little bit better. I did end up top coating it with a glossy gel top coat just because I felt like only having one matte nail did kind of throw off the nail design. So do let me know down below in the comments if you like this nail to be matte or glossy. I do prefer it to be glossy. I do feel like I did a pretty decent job with my first sculpted acrylic nail set. 
let me know what you think down below of course if you have any tips or tricks leave them down below in the comments as well and do make sure to subscribe because i do post weekly nail videos and i will see you guys in the next video bye a little side note i forgot that these flowers change color in the uv light and i was so confused why the flowers were orange when i took my videos outside it does go back to normal after going back inside